Good afternoon. Namaste and good afternoon. My name is Ram Bahadur Jishi, an English teacher of Kalika Managvian Secondary School. Uh, in our previous class, we discussed about two poems, The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost and I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud by William Morshot. Uh, today also we are going to discuss about uh, some of the poems. Uh, out of these poems, first of all, uh, we are going to learn about past and present. Uh, while talking about this poem, uh, past and present, this poem was composed by uh, Thomas Wood. Thomas Wood, uh, in this poem, he compares two types of situations. Past means his childhood and the present is adul adulthood. Uh, while talking about these two situations, his past was glorious, his past was happy, full of enjoy, but his present life is full of sufferings, problems and difficulties. So these two types of situations are presented or are compared in the compared by the poet Thomas Ward. Okay. Uh, past and present by the poet Thomas Wood. He is the poet. Uh, and while talking about uh, this uh, poet, uh, he, to some extent, he longs for his childhood. Now, first of all, let's recite about this poem. Uh, past and present uh, is in stanza 1, 2 and other way. I remember, I remember the house where I was born, the little window where the sun came peeping in the morn, in at the morn. He never came a wing too soon, nor brought too long a day. But now I often wish the night had borne my breath away. I remember, I remember the roses, red and white, the violets and the lily cups, those flowers made of light, the lila lilacs where the robin wolt, and where my brother sat, the lavanum on his birthday. The tree is living it. Stanza 3. I remember, I remember where I was used to swing and thought the year must rush as fresh to swallows on the wing. My spirit flew in feathers then, that is so heavy now, and summer pools could hardly cool the fever on my brow. I remember, I remember the four trees dark and high. I used to think their slender tops were close against the sky. It was a childish ignorance, but now it is a little joy to know I am farther off from heaven than when I was a boy. It's okay. It is about the recitation of the poem. Now, let's discuss some of the words from this poem and their meaning in the context of this poem. Peeping means looking quickly and secretly. Morn means morning. Wink, blink or flash, burn, carried or transported by, swing, to move from one place to another by holding something, means a kind of game played by the children, rush, to move quickly, spirit, soul, hardly, barely, bro, forehead, slender, thin or narrow, wing, one of the soft light parts covering of a bird's body. And it has other many words as well. Uh, on the basis of this poem, there are some of the words like uh, basically in second stanza, the poet has mentioned some of the uh, name of the flowers like uh, red and white roots. It is frequently bush or, bush or shrubs with uh, f fragrant flowers. Uh, similarly, uh, in that second stanza, there is another uh, flower that is uh, Violets, violets, 
uh, it is small plants with purple or white flowers that appear in spring season. Uh, similarly, in the second stanza, uh, there, is, there is another flower, lily. Another flower, lily. Uh, a large white or brightly colored flower with petals call back from the center, that is lily. Then next is labanum. Labanum is a small tree with hanging bunches of yellow color. And another, that's another plant uh, mentioned in, in this system, the, uh, another flower is lilacs. A bush or a small tree with purple or white flowers in the shape of cone, that is lilacs. And another plant is fir, an evergreen forest tree with leaves like needles that is called for and uh, in this poem uh, some of the uh, some of the words related to birds are birds are also are, are also presented here uh, for example robin some of the pictures of bird bird robin that type of word is robin and swallows that is swallows also means bird Okay, this is about uh, some of the words uh, and the, uh, their meaning. And now let's talk about, or uh, now let's paraphrase about this poem, past and uh, present. Paraphrasing of the poem, past and present. I remember, I remember the house where I was born, the little window where the sun came peeping in at morn, he never came a wing too soon, nor brought too long a day, but now I often wish the night had borne my breath away. In this first stanza, the poet remembers about his house where he was born. As well as he remembers about the little window where the sun used where the sun rays used to come peeping in the morning. And those sun rays they did not stay in that room for a long time, for the whole day. Neither those sun rays come and go quickly, like the blinking of the eyes. Those activities, basically, in this stanza, the poet remembers about his house, uh, the windows, and those things in first stanza. And at the towards the uh, last line, but now, I often wish the night had borne my breath away. These two lines give a, a different kinds of wish of the poet. Now the poet has become poet has become adult, and in his adulthood, uh, that uh, he is he is full with sufferings and problems. He has lots of tensions, worries. His life is not happy enough. In, his, in this adulthood uh, in comparison to his childhood. So in these two lines, uh, the wish of the poet is that the night had borne my breath away. It means the poet w wishes to die. He doesn't want to live in this world anymore. Okay, some of the questions from this paragraph like uh, what does the poet remember in the first stanza, like remembers the house where he was born, as well as he remembers the little window, uh, the sun came, pe came peeping. Those things, you know, uh, those are the questions, those are the answers. Similarly, uh, what does the poet, poet wish uh, in the first stanza, stanza? The poet wishes the night had borne his breath away. Those would be the answers from this uh, stanza. Now, let's talk about second stanza. I remember, I remember the roses, red and white, the violets and the lily cups, those flowers made of light, the lilacs where the robin builds, and where my, okay, first of all, let's discuss about them. Up to this five line, the poet remembers different kinds of flowers in his garden of, of the childhood. Uh, like different kinds of flowers like the roses, 
of uh, red color and the white color, the violets, the lily cups, and those flowers were uh, bright enough, made of light. And the lilacs were the robin bolts. Uh, in lilac flower, the robin is a bird. That bird used to make of its, of its nest in lilac tree. That things also the poet remember. And where my brother sits, the Lebanon on his birthday. And the poet remembers, the speaker remembers that here the brother, my brother refers to his elder brother. His el elder brother used to set the labanum on his birthday. It means his elder brother used to plant the labanum tree on the occasion of his birthday. That uh, at that time, uh, while celebrating the birthday, such type of creativity, creative type of activities like uh, that planting uh, trees, such type of creativity, cre creative activities were done. Uh, in past, but these days we are destroying such type of norms and uh, values while celebrating our birthdays. We cut the cakes, it means we destroy. We are celebrating our birthdays by destroying. And the tree is living it. The tree is living it here gives two meanings. The tree is living it gives two meanings. First of all, uh, the poet. The poet's brother had planted that labanum tree on the occasion of his birthday, and that labanum tree is growing or it is getting progress or it is increasing. But the condition of the speaker or the condition of his brother is decreasing uh, and getting down. That is one meaning. And another meaning of, the, of this line is the tree is living at it. Mean, it means the brother of the speaker has died already, but the tree is still living there. So, these two meanings can be derived from this uh, line, the tree is living at. Now, let us paraphrase about stanza 3. Stanza 3, I remember, I remember stanza 3. I remember, I remember where I was used to swing and thought the year must rush as phrase to swallows on the swing. My spirit flew in feathers then, that is so heavy now, and summer pools could hardly cool the fever on my brow. In this stanza, the poet uh, remembers about his childhood as well as he compares his childhood with this present time. First of all, uh, in this stanza, he remembers different kinds of activities that he used to play, as well as different kinds of uh, uh, sentiments uh, in his childhood and in his uh, adulthood. Uh, when he was a child at that time, he was used to swing. It means he, you, he used to swing. He was used to swing means. He was too small that his brother or his parents they used they helped him to swim and thought the year must rush as fresh while swinging that the poet used to feel that uh, rushing of the fresh air and it was like it was like the wing of the birds or wing uh, wing of the wing of the swallows or wing of the birds while swinging. At that time, that uh, he was, he used to feel very fresh, very <coughs> energetic, and he used to get enjoy, enjoyments. And at that time, my spirit, his spirit flew in feathers. Then, at that time, his spirit, his soul, was very light. Uh, it, his spirit was so light that. It was light as the feathers of the bird, but now he that is so heavy now that his spirit has become too heavy now. Why his spirit was so light in his childhood, and why that spirit is so heavy now? Because in his childhood uh, he did not have any kinds of tensions, he did he did not have any kinds of worries, 
uh, he did not have any kind of burdens. So his spirit was very light. Yeah, his life, his days were sp uh, spending very happily. But now in his adulthood, his spirit is heavy because of so many tensions, so many worries, so many burdens, and uh, many more things. His spirit has become too much heavy now. And at that time, uh, and summer pools could hardly cool the fever on my brow. In my childhood, that some the water of um, water of pools in the summer season that could make my brow, make my forehead cool very easily. It used to provide me uh, enjoy, but now that water of pools in summer season it doesn't provide uh, it. It doesn't give me any uh, enjoyment. It doesn't make my brow cool. The fever on my brow means, you know, my head or my um, forehead ha has become too much hot because of tension, because of worries, and because of so many things. So, in this stanza, he compares about his childhood and about his adulthood uh, with uh, some of the activities as well as some of his. Uh, that sensations. Now let's talk about uh, stanza four. I remember, I remember the four tree that dark and high. I used to think their slender tops were close against the sky. It was a childish ignorance, but now it is a little joy to know I'm farther off from heaven than when I was a boy. Uh, in this last stanza. Uh, he remembers uh, about his childish ignorance. Uh, in his childhood, uh, he used to think that the four trees uh, that was very tall, as well as uh, dark with uh, green color. Uh, I used to think their slender tops, means that narrow, narrow tops of that uh, four tree, was near the uh, was near the sky. That type of thought he had in his childhood that he himself has said that it was a childish ignorance, yes, that type of thought that those four trees uh, against the sky or the, the top of the four trees against the sky, that was my childish ignorance. But now it is little joy. For the first time in this last stanza, the poet has used the word joy. It means why he has got, you know, how he has got joy uh, in this present, present moment. When he knows the reality, when he became free from his childish ignorance, at that time he got a bit little joy. Yeah? To know I'm farther off from heaven than when I was a boy. Uh, in these two lines of this stanza, the poet has brought the concept of heaven. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to say something about the concept of hell, heaven and hell. Heaven is that place, uh, actually heaven and hell are an abstract ideas and they are related with place. But those places, heaven and hell, they do not lie in any of the countries or any of the continents. But that is an abstract, those are, an, those are the abstract places. Heaven means heaven means that place where there is happiness, where there is no discrimination, where there is freedom, where there is available of each and every things, where there is no problems, no sufferings. That place is heaven. And hell is that place where there is sufferings, problems, difficulties, injustice discrimination, shortage, that type of place is called hell. So, uh, in the context of the poet, in the situation of the poet, in his childhood, his life was happy, full of, in, full of joy. He did not have any kinds of problems, difficulties, tensions, anything he did not have. So, he has compared his life of childhood with, with heaven. But now, his life is full of sufferings, tensions, worries, and so many things. So he compares his life with hell. So to know I'm farther off from heaven, I'm very far away from heaven. That means he is very far away from his childhood. He has compared that childhood with heaven than when I was a boy, 
when I was a boy means when he was a child. In this way, uh, in this poem, the poet, you know, the poet has compared uh, two situations about past and the present. Past life was glorious, past life was happy, it was full of joy, he did not have any kinds of problems, yeah, but in present, he has so many problems, he is going through so many difficulties, he had so many tensions and worries, so he is longing for the childhood, yes, he is longing for the childhood. It is, you know, it is about the poem past and present. Uh, such type of concept, such type of concept, uh, longing for the past, longing for the past is called nostalgia. Okay, uh, now let us summarize uh, this poem in some of the points. Uh, in the poem past and the present, the poet initially portrays his childhood and the house where he was born. Uh, those beautiful days uh, when the sun rays came peeping through uh, his window uh, in the morning are still vivid in his memory. In the second stanza, he remembers the days of his childhood where he used to see and feel the beautiful colors of the roses and lilies and the lilacs. In the same way, he talks about the trees in which his brother used to share the labanum on his um, brother's birthday. Similarly, uh, in third and fourth stanza, um, he shows the contrast experience of his past and, the past and the present. Uh, he vividly remembers how he used to swing, enjoy the breeze and wind. Uh, in the same way, he, wo he was all energetic and high in his spirit, but now he does not have energy to lift his spirit. The water in the pool was cool and pleasant, but now it is not cool enough to cool his fever. Finally, he says how he used to think in the wildest manner about four trees and their slender tops which could toss the sky. Now he misses his joy of his childhood and realizes that nothing is attainable. So this poem, you know, this poem is about uh, nostalgia. Have you heard about the term nostalgia? If we long for the past, if we long for the past activities, that type of that type of action or that type of thing is called nostalgia. Uh, and sometimes that uh, what is the tone of the of this poem that type of question also was asked frequently so you, you have to write a nostalgic poem a nostalgic tone nostalgic tone uh, can be found in this poem uh, after dealing with this poem uh, that varieties of questions would be asked to you uh, in your examinations uh, first one is uh, fill in the blanks, you have to solve those questions. The speaker vividly dot 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 the house he was born. Uh, two number dot 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 rose and set just on time. Here rose refers to second form of rice, second form of rice, not the flower. Rose and set just on time. The poet recalls that dot 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 were red and uh, white. Four dot 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 bold its nest in the lilacs. The lilac tree is still by the house, the poet think that, thinks that the ear must its fresh to swallows on the swing wings. The poet said that his that, that, that used to fly in feathers, but now it's so heavy. Now next type of questions. Match the following. Match the words in column A with their meaning in column B. Column A, peep, violets, lily, labnum, uh, slender, spirit, lilac. In column B, a small tree with uh, hanging bunches of yellow flowers. B, to look quickly and uh, secretly at something. Uh, C, a small plant with purple or white flowers that appear in spring. D, a large white or brightly colored flower with petals that call back from the center. E. The part of a person that includes their mind, feeling and character. F. A bush or a small tree with purple or white flowers in a shape of cone. G. 
thin or narrow now answer the following questions who composed this poem what is the poem about what does the poet remember in the first stanza what does the poet wish in the first stanza what was the poet's childish ignorance how does the poet describe his childhood in the third stanza okay these are the questions for you to solve uh, now let's go to another poem the name of that poem is the chimney sweeper the chimney sweeper by william blake okay i'll define about the word chimney and sweeper uh, while that in one meaning uh, before that i want to say something about the poet william blake he is a romantic poet uh, and in this poem uh, he has presented the situation uh, of england in the late 18th century where many of the children were involved in uh, such type of works uh, which are full of freaks in that type of works the children were involved uh, mainly uh, in this poem how the children were exploited how the children were used in different kinds of dirty types of works and how those works have affected their health those things are presented in this poem the chimney sweeper by william blake now you can see in the picture that in first picture there is only one boy that is very small and in another picture there are many boys those are also uh, chimney sweeper now let's know what is chimney uh, sorry let's know about the poet william blake william blake uh, this poem chimney sweeper has been presented you know has been uh, has been presented in two years in 1789 and in 1794 uh, while talking about the poet william blake he has uh, published two volumes of poems uh, one is song of innocence and another is song of experience in both these volumes of the poet uh, this poem the chimney sweeper has been presented uh, look at the picture of the chimney a chimney is a pipe or a structure through which smoke or steam is carried away from a fire furnace that is called chimney and uh, now let's recite about this poem recitation of the poem when my mother died i was very young and my father sold me while at my tongue could scarcely cry wave 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 so your chimneys i sweep and in suit i sleep there is little tom jackery who cried when his head that call like a lamb's back was saved so i said Oh, storm! Never mind it. For when your head is bare, you know that the suit cannot spoil your white hair. And so he was quiet. And that very night, a storm was uh, sleeping. He had a such a sight that thousands of sweepers, Dick, Joe, Ned, and Jack, were all of them locked up in coffins of black. and by came an angel who had a bright key and he opened the coffin and set them all free then down a green plain leaping laughing they ran and was in a river and sign in the sun then naked and white all their bags left behind they rise upon clouds and is sport in the wind and the angel told tom if he would be a good boy 
he would have God for his father and never one joy. And so Tom awoke and we rose in the dark and he got with our bags and our brushes to walk. Though the morning was cold, Tom was happy and warm. So if all do their duty, they need not fear harm. This is about the poem, The Chimney Sweeper. Altogether there are six stanza consisting of four lines. Now let's talk about some of the words and their meaning in this poem. Uh, first one is soot. About chimney you have known already. Uh, soot, black powder formed from burning. Sweeper, a person whose job is to clean something. Whip, cry. Lamb, a baby sheep, who's to be silent. Bear, naked. Spoil, ruin, destroy. Quiet, calm. Sight, vision. Saved, having the beard or hair cut off. Locked up closed, coffins, a box in which a dead body is buried or cremated, angel, a messenger of God, plain, a large area of flat land, leaping, jumping, sign, glow, twinkle, awoke, uh, arouse, that is the second form of awake, past form of awake, rose, got up, rose also, rose is the um, past form of rise, and brushes, the instruments used for sweeping or cleaning, that is called, those are brushes. Now, <coughs> some of the pictures related to, to these poems are, first one is lamb's back, look at there, lamb's back, that is the wool of the, la wool of the lamb is curly. And second picture is saved here, that some boys here is saved, and other pictures. That, that is soot. Soot means black powder. That comes out from the, that comes out from the chimney. And angel, angel, angel is the messenger of the God. Me, messenger of the God. And next picture, coffin. That is, coffin especially used for, used to keep the dead body. Uh, these are the words and their meaning. Now let's paraphrase about the poem, The Chimney Sweeper. It has altogether six stanza. First of all, let's, dis <coughs> let's uh, paraphrase about these stanzas. Uh, when my mother died, I was very young, and my father sold me while at my tongue could scarcely cry, weep, 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 weep. So your chimneys I sweep and in suit I sleep. In first stanza, the speaker or the poet has presented a very pathetic condition about himself. When his mother died, when his mother died, he became orphan. And then after my father sold me, then after after the death of my father, death, death of my mother, my father sold me. It means that uh, that family, that family was too poor, was very much poor. So, uh, because of poverty, his mother died, and because of poverty, his father was compelled to sell him. And uh, at that time, you know, he was not old enough. I think at that time he might be just four or five years. He could not speak me while at my tongue could he scarcely cry, weep, 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 weep. Actually, the, the speaker, that four words, uh, four words are weep, actually the poet, actually the poet was trying to pronounce the word sweep, but <coughs> while crying, while crying, he could not pronounce the word sweep properly, and he pronounced the word weep, weep, weep. In that while crying, he pronounced, pronounced those words as weep, weep. At that time, <coughs> at that time, or in that age, in that tender age, in that young age, in that childhood, so your chimneys I sweep from that, you know, from that time of time of my life, 
I begin to sweep your chimneys. And in soot I sleep. Soot means black powder. It means the did the poet used to sleep in the black powder? It's not so. It means the poet or the speaker he used to sleep. Sleep without cleaning his body, covered with that black powder while cleaning the chimney. Uh, it is about you know it is about the stanza first and now let's talk about uh, stanza second there is a little tom jackery who cried when his head that call like a lamb's bag was saved so i said who's oh, tom never mind it for when your head is bare you know that the suit cannot spoil your white hair then that uh, in first stanza the poet uh, why was the poet crying the poet was crying because his mother died and his father told him that in that chimney sweeping job or in chimney sweeping chimney sweeper master uh, and so uh, in first stanza that we can say that or we can ask uh, where did the poet sleep the poet sleep or how did the poet sleep or how did the speaker sleep uh, his speaker the speaker sl slept uh, that uh, without cleaning his body uh, covered with black powder and in second stanza another chimney sweeper that is tom jackery another chimney sweeper tom jackery who cried he also he was also cried when his hair that call like a lamb's back was shaved so i did i so i said uh, why did the why did why did tom jackery cry in the second stanza because his head was saved so he wa he was he cried and how was the how was uh, how was the hair of tom jackery his hair was called like a lamb's back that that is one of the very important phrase that we have to remember called like a lamb's back lamb's back it means called like a lamb's back means curly hair style of tom jackery uh, like the lamb's back's wool it is because of that because of dust smoke and dirt and it is because of lack of proper proper care of his hair so <coughs> sometimes what does uh, that such type of question what does uh, what does mean by call like a lamb's back that type of question also may be asked to you it means uh, curly hair curly hair style or curly hair like a lamb's wool it is because of dust dot and lack of proper care uh, at that time in, then after at that time so i said was tom never mind it why while the tom was tom jackery was crying at that time i said to tom please tom be quiet don't mind about it for when your head is bare you know that the suit cannot spoil your white hair have you have you known about the reality of shaving your head obviously when you have when your hair is shaved you don't have to suffer from any kinds of problems related to your hair your hair will not be spoiled by black suit as well as your hair in your hair there will not be any lice or there will not be any problems uh, as well as your hair will not be cut by the fire of the chimney so don't be worry about that and when i said or when <coughs> i told to tom uh, about that and so he was quiet then after tom was consoled or the speaker consoled tom <coughs> by saying those things then after tom was quiet and that very night that very night as tom was asleeping he had such a dream such a light such a sight then after on the very day or on the very night when tom was tom is the speaker's friend he was also chimney sweeper Uh, when too much uh, sleeping, uh, sleeping at that time, he had such a sight. Means he <coughs> he saw a dream. He saw a dream, and according to his dream, 
now the dream begins that thousands of sweepers dig joe ned and jack were all of them locked up in coffins of black that the dream begins from the word that thousands of sweeper dig joe ned and jack were all of them locked up in coffins of black here black refers to the <coughs> exploitation of the children exploitation of the children that very difficult life of the children that uh, the rampant life of the children those things are presented by the word black thousand of sweepers all of them you know all of them were they were locked up means closed in coffins of black many of the many of those uh, sweepers those all sweepers were also children they were closed and they ha they were spending the life in suffocation as well as some of the sweepers lost their life because the chimney sweeping job was full of risks sometimes those chimney sweepers fall down from the chimneys and they had to lose their life sometimes those chim chimney sweepers they suffer from lungs problem or lungs disease and sometimes they had to suffer from other kinds of diseases because of those things they had to lose their life in their young or in their childhood now let's go to the next stanza and by came by that that third and the fourth stanza third and the fourth stanza third and the fourth stanza and by came an angel who had a bright key and he opened the coffins and set them all free then down a green plain leaping laughing they run and wash in a river and shine in the sun that i have already told you that uh, tom's dream begins from the word that and and by came an angel who had a bright key angel means the messenger of the god and he opened the coffins and set them all free then down a green plain leaping laughing they run those chimney sweepers up to now they were spending their life in suffocation they did not have any kind of freedom at that time the messenger of the god came and he opened by the help of bright key he opened the coffins by the help of bright key and uh, set them all free then after those chimney sweepers they begin to run in green plain by leaping laughing in this way not only that they wash in a river and shine in the sun they clean their body in the river and because of clean because of the cleaning of their body they begin to shine in the sun now let's <coughs> let's go to stanza number 5 and 6 then naked and white then naked and white all their bags left behind they rise upon clouds and they sport in the wind and the angel told tom if he would be a good boy he would have god for his father and never want joy that uh, in this fifth stanza mm, tom visions are it is the vision of the of of tom the naked and the white the naked and the white all their bags left behind your bags refers to the bags used to keep instruments for sweeping the chimneys that you know that bag refers to that bag uh, in which the instrument for sweeping the chimneys are kept all their bags left behind they rise upon clouds they begin to fantasize they begin to imagine and sport in the wind they begin to play in the wind and at that time the angel told tom 
if he would be a good boy, if Tom could be a good boy, he would have God for his father. It means Tom's father would be the God, or God, God's, God's son would be Tom. It means God would play the role of father for Tom. And when the God becomes the father of Tom or, fa or, the, or the father of the chimney sweeper, then why Tom had to want joy, never want joy? At that time, <coughs> there would not be any kinds of any kinds of scarcity of joy for Tom. In this way, up to there, up to there, that from that thousand sweepers up to one joy, this is all about the dream and vision of Tom while he was asleeping. And last stanza. And so Tom awoke. Up to now he was in dream. He was dreaming. Now he was that and so Tom awoke and we rose in the dark and got with our bags and our brushes to walk. Though the morning was cold, Tom was happy and warm. So if all do their duty, they need not fear him. Uh, up to now, up to fifth, you know, up to that, uh, up to the word joy, it was only the dream of Tom. But now, Tom awoke. He, he got up and he rose in the dark. He rose in the dark. We means the speaker and the Tom and other sweepers, they rose in the dark. The speaker and the Tom and got with our bags and the brushes to work. Then, uh, then after we cut our bags, bags about bags I told you already, bags in which different kinds of instruments uh, to sweep the chimneys are kept and brushes to work. Though the morning was cold, Tom was happy and warm. In that mo cold morning also, Tom was, hap Tom was feeling happy and warm it, because he had seen a dream. Yeah? Because he has hope. Once, you know, once that we would get such type of freedom, that type of hope he, 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 had, he had. So, because of hope, in that mm, cold morning also, he was feeling happy and warm. So, if all do their duty, then need not fear harm. Fear harm. And the last line of this uh, poem, gives a moral that we all have to do our duty properly. If we all do our duty properly, then we need not fear of anything or we need not fear of harm anymore. So we all have to fulfill our duty properly. That type of, that type of moral is given from the last line of this poem. Okay, it's okay. It is about the poem, The Chimney Sweeper by William Blake. Okay, uh, after, <coughs> after this uh, poem, you have to solve some of the questions uh, based on your textbook as well as uh, the questions where, wherever you find. Uh, our time is uh, uh, about to be over. So, uh, I would like to thank all of you for watching this television with, television with patients and a special thanks goes to the technician as well as to the entire family of Buddha Community Television. Thank you all of you.